So welcome to the second portion of our webinar three of the um, Enhance the Tool of Your Trade webinar series. So in webinar one, we discussed that farmers are extremely similar to athletes because their capacity for income and their longevity of career relies on their ability to perform. So farmers are paid to keep their mind and their body healthy. They're paid to perform using the tools of their trade. And we also explained that it is extremely common for people to be subconsciously suboptimal in some of their movement patterns. So you may be moving well, or you may be moving poorly, but the key is if you're moving poorly, you often do not know. So in rural jobs, as farmers, load is definitely inevitable. You're gonna lift, carry, push, pull, all as standard parts of your working day and your tasks are often pretty repetitive. And the thing is that movement problems will only get worse when load and frequency are increased. So if you're moving poorly, but you do not know it, and you're having to do tasks with load or with frequency at work, the likelihood is that these movement problems may get worse. So knowing that we just cannot remove the load and frequency and the movement demands from rural jobs, we must instead make a considered effort to make sure that rural workers are moving well and that they are not carrying movement problems that could get worse and lead to wear, tear or pain as their careers progress. So this is why we learned about warrants of movements and movement snacks in webinar one. And movement snacks are those bite-sized amounts of movement exercise, which you can do throughout your working day. And movement snacks help you enhance your own and your individual movement patterns. So effectively, they help you enhance the function of the tool of your trade. And it little and often definitely can be a very effective way of making quick and long lasted changes. So we ran through the toe touch progression in webinar one, which was a movement snack which helps to improve your body awareness and your mobility for deep squatting and for hip hinging, which is your deadlift movement. And then in webinar two, we learned breathing movement snacks because good breathing practices help both physical and mental relaxation, and they have significant links to helping improve our movement. So there's one more topic that we need to discuss as an important factor to support our ability to move well, and this is having good posture. And we need to be able to keep good position and alignment through movement if we are to be able to move well. So posture effectively refers to the body's alignment and positioning under the ever-present force of gravity. So whether we're standing, sitting or lying down, gravity exerts force upon our bodies. So good posture results in having the ability to distribute that force of gravity through our body so that no one structure is overstressed. And this helps contribute to us performing in the most efficient manner. Whereas poor posture causes the body to be suboptimally aligned. And this means that extra forces and stress can be opposed upon the body. And it can actually cause a reduction in our performance and over time lead to wear, tear and pain. So it's really important to acknowledge here though, that our posture is an ever changing thing. It depends on the task which you need to perform. So we often only think of posture as a very static thing, but posture is not just how we are aligned when we are in a static stationary position. Postures is also a very dynamic thing. So when moving well, we perform using good dynamic postural alignment. <clears throat> so when we have good posture, the muscles that surround our spine are balanced and they support the body equally. And we have good structural alignment. So sitting, standing, and importantly, moving with proper postural alignment will allow you to work more efficiently, with less fatigue, and with less strain upon your body. 
So in webinar two, Samantha talked about awareness being really key in regards to reducing the stress that we're imposing upon ourselves mentally. But awareness is also really key for us in regards to being aware of the physical stresses that we place upon our bodies. So if we can maintain a good postural alignment whilst we're in a position or throughout movements, we will be reducing the amount of stress that we're placing upon our physical body. So good postural alignment is a key aspect of moving well. And the sitting position is the most obvious in which we often succumb to poor postural habits. And it's especially true when we're driving vehicles such as your ute, you're in the tractor or you're on a four wheeler. We focus on the task that we're doing when we're in vehicles, or we may even spend that driving time thinking about everything else that we need to do that day. But by concentrating hard or thinking about other things, we tend to let our body slouch. We slouch through our lower back, which rounds our shoulders and our head and our neck protrude forwards. And the problem is that when this occurs, the weight of the head and the upper body is no longer balanced over the top of the spine in its optimal spinal alignment. So this poor posture then increases the stress and the strain placed upon the tissues of the body. And over time, this can lead to muscular fatigue and eventually even aches, pains and wear and tear upon our body. So it's really important that we need to develop an awareness of our posture we need to know what good seated postural alignment looks and feels like. So to start this, we need to understand the pelvis. The pelvis can be described as the seat of the spine. So neutral pelvis is the position of the pelvis in which the hip points, so the hip bones at the front of the pelvis that we all know about, and the pubic bone uh, are in alignment. So in neutral pelvis, the hip bones and the pubic bone are in line and level with each other. And also the right and the left hip bones are in alignment, in line and level with each other. So we need to know uh, almost how to check this neutral pelvis position. And a really good way is to use your fingers like in this position, in this photograph here for this position. So uh, you're going to have to excuse me that I can't help you do this, but you'll get a good idea. As you can see, I've got a little cast on my thumb at the moment. But imagine that my thumbs are joining. And you're going to take your index fingers and join them together and your thumbs and join them together. And you'll see that that creates a triangle. So we want to create that triangle and then place the heel of the hands onto the front of those hip bones and the fingers onto the pubic bone. Now, if you are slouching, which we're gonna discuss further on in this little webinar, if you're slouching, then the bottom of the triangle is going to tilt forwards. So the fingers are gonna be in front of the thumbs. If you've got an overarched back, then your top of your triangle will tilt forwards. So the thumbs will be in front of the fingers. But if you've got a neutral pelvis, then the triangles of the fingers and the thumbs will be level. So that means that our hip bones and our pubic bones are in that level alignment and we are in that neutral pelvis position. So it's a really quick and simple way to be able to test your neutral pelvis position using this triangle as in that photograph. So we then also need to discuss neutral spine. The neutral spine is facilitated by that neutral pelvis we just discussed. So when the pelvis is in its neutral position, it allows the spine to be aligned with its natural curves. And this creates the best amount of space between each spinal vertebrae. So neutral spine is the position of the spine where all three of the curves of the spine, so your cervical, which is your neck, your thoracic, which is your middle of your back, and your lumbar, which is your lower back, those three curves are all in their natural, well-aligned position. So neutral spine position is the strongest position for the spine when we're standing, sitting, kneeling, and lying. And it's also the most natural spinal position that we're designed to move from. 
And when we're in neutral spine, it's the position in which the core functions at its most optimally. So this is why having awareness of how to find that neutral spine is so important. When we're training the core or when we're performing physical tasks, when we need that core to function optimally for us. So this neutral spine position naturally fires up those deep core muscles. Whereas incorrect posture inhibits the correct function of these core muscles. So importantly, though, we do not want to have any one like fixed postural position. Yes, we need to aim for good posture and we need to understand the benefits it brings to us for both performance and for physical longevity. But we also need to allow for variation. Variation is great. We need to keep our spines moving and let ourselves go through varied postural positions, but always having that awareness of what our most optimal postural alignment should be. So to do this, we need to have that awareness of neutral pelvis and neutral spine. And it's going to give us that ability to then adjust our pelvis and spinal positions throughout the day. So it really, really is important that we have an awareness and understanding of how to find our good postural alignment because we are aiming to reduce the load, reduce the strain and the stress that we're placing upon our bodies. So this is where we come to posture hacks and they are quite literally the postural alignment version of those movement snacks that we did in webinar one and two. So they're simple, easy ways to help you improve your posture during your day and in your working environment. So the posture hack that we're going to go through today helps you to find your neutral spine and neutral pelvis that we've just discussed. So what you can see in these two photographs is the picture on the left is your slouch position that we all know we fall back to quite often. And the position on the right, you can see is quite a nice neutral spine and neutral pelvis position. And it does actually look pretty comfortable. And if you get the neutral spine and neutral pelvis right, it actually is a very comfortable position to be in. It's just finding that awareness of how to do so. And that's the posture, posture hack that we're going to do now. So I'd like you to shuffle yourself forward on your seat that you're sitting on now and just pop your feet flat on the floor for me. You're going to relax your shoulders, relax your neck and your jaw and sit in what you feel at the moment could be that neutral pelvis position, that neutral spine, neutral pelvis. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is as you breathe out, I'm going to get you to roll onto the back of your sit bones. And this is what we call a pelvic tuck. So you want to shine your tailbone forwards as you roll onto the back of your pelvis, the back of those sit bones. And you'll notice when you do this that you slouch, you get shorter in height, and your shoulders will round forward and your head will drop forward as you go into that slouched position. Then what we're going to do is breathe in and you're going to roll over your sit bones at the bottom of your pelvis towards your pubic bone. And you'll notice as you do this that it's like your, your tailbone shines backwards. You get quite a significant arch in your lower back and often your belly will pop out as well. And this is what we call a pelvic tilt position. So if we roll backwards and forwards between these two positions, what I want you to really think about imagining is that the base of your pelvis is a bit like a rocking horse and you're rocking across the base of that rocking horse. So you're thinking about moving your pelvis, rolling onto the back of your sit bones into that slouch position, the pelvic tuck, rolling across the bottom of the pelvis into your pelvic tilt, which is where you're heading towards your pubic bone. Then what we need to do is find the natural position midway between that pelvic tuck and that pelvic tilt. And this is the neutral pelvis position that we talked about that facilitates that neutral spine position. So we're rolling back into our pelvic tuck, rolling forwards into our pelvic tilt. And then I just want you to settle yourself and where you feel is that neutral position in between the two. And here you'll find that you're naturally at your tallest. And actually it seems a relatively easy position to be in. 
And at this point, your sit bones are going to be pointing straight down towards the ground. So obviously, we can now use that little triangle that we talked about earlier in this webinar to test whether we are in this neutral pelvis and neutral spine position. So you're going to take your thumbs and your fingers again, pop them, your heels of your hands onto the front of your hip bones and your index fingers will be down on your pubic bone and your thumbs will be joining in the middle like in the picture on the right hand side. So if we roll back into our pelvic tuck keeping that triangle on our uh, front of our pelvis you will see that your fingers start to drop in front of your thumbs. Then we roll across the bottom of our pelvis into our pelvic tilt where our tailbone shines backwards and you'll see that your thumbs come in front of your fingers. Rolling backwards and forwards again just be aware of what that triangle does and how it changes with your pelvis and then settle yourself into your neutral pelvis position and at that stage your fingers and your thumbs should be straight in line and level with each other as in the photograph. This is your neutral pelvis position. Neutral pelvis position facilitates neutral spine alignment and therefore brings us into a good seated postural alignment. So that's a really lovely posture hack to be able to do any time during your day. As you can see in the picture here, you can do it on your four wheeler. You can do it in your ute. You can do it when you're driving your tractor but it's a literal gentle roll backwards and forwards and then finding that nice neutral spine and neutral pelvis position which is our optimal postural alignment. So learning to use movement snacks and posture hacks during your working day supports your ability to move well and to practically perform in your working environment. So effectively, having the knowledge of how to perform movement snacks and posture hacks helps you to perform as a rural athlete. So Samantha gave us some fantastic insight into behavior change in her part of this webinar three. And as we have mentioned, awareness is key, but also finding ways to remind yourself to utilize these posture hacks or to find moments in the day that jog your memory or become a routine time to perform your movement snacks is key to having that behavior change as well. So I've just got a few ideas here of times during your working day where you could add in movement snacks or posture hacks. So to remind yourself to use that seated neutral pelvis posture hack, which we just learnt, you could try putting a dot of rattle on the steering wheel of your four wheeler or your ute or your tractor. So then every time you see that dot, you'll see it as a reminder or a cue to check your seated posture position. Uh, you could do things like putting a post-it note on the edge of your TV. You don't need to write anything on that post-it note, just stick it on the corner of the TV or even on your controller for your TV. And then when you switch that TV on in the evening to watch the news or the weather, you're reminded by seeing that post-it note to do a movement snack. And you can easily do a movement snack whilst you're watching the news or the weather rather than sitting down on the couch. Another time that people will often do movement snacks is every time they get off the four wheeler to open a gate. You could do 30 to 60 seconds of a movement snack then. So it's a stop or a break in your movement routine. And you can take that as an opportunity to do those small movement snacks because they're not long. They don't delay you that long at all, but it is a change in your routine that can give you that little reminder to say, stop here for 30 to 60 seconds and do one of your movement snacks. And then another really great time is when you're driving. So when you do pop into town, uh, and you stop at the traffic lights. This could be your cue to do a breathing exercise. The reason I use this one as a really good reminder is that the back of the car seat gives really nice feedback to you for breathing into the back of that rib cage and the side of the rib cage. So we discussed a 360 degree breath in webinar two and sitting in your car gives you fantastic feedback for that. So take the traffic lights or if you're driving the kids down to the end of the road to catch the school bus, every time 
you go past a neighbor's driveway or whatever that spot is for you that reminds you is that little memory jog it is a really nice time to do your breathing exercise when you're in the car and another time to do really good breathing exercises movement snacks is when you're lying down on your back at night and it's one of the most relaxing ways to fall asleep is to do your box breathing technique that we learned in webinar two and you'll actually find that you drift off to sleep much quicker than normal by doing a box breathing technique. And then you can start to be a little bit uh, personal with your ideas of when you can make those behavior changes during your day to think about when it might work for you. Uh, if your dogs are working, it may work for you sometimes to do a movement snack whilst your dogs are working. And your routines are going to be different than everybody else's. And I think it's very important that we take the time to think about where in your daily routine would it work to do so. So I would suggest that uh, if you are interested in starting to incorporate these movement snacks and posture hacks into your day, that you just take the time to sit down one evening and have a notepad and work out the days, the, the, the time, sorry, in your daily routine, that it would work for you to set yourself little reminders, little cues that will help you perform those movement snacks. Because this is very beneficial in that it means we are incorporating things into our day that are going to be supportive and proactive uh, for our physical health and our longevity of our career, but we're not having to take specific time out to do that. So that's why this concept of behavior change is so very important for us. So that is the end of our three-part webinar series. And I'd like to say a huge thank you to Samantha McBride, who's joined me as co-presenter of these three webinars. And she has brought us some really fascinating information alongside the movement uh, um, information that I have been giving you. And also, of course, to Beef and Lamb New Zealand for hosting us for this series. And I'd definitely like to thank you all for joining us for these three webinars in this series of Enhancing the Tool of Your Trade. And I very much hope you've all enjoyed being with us.